Hello everyone, I am Sacred and thank you for joining me in another mod spotlight in Hearts of Iron 4. Well, today we are going to take a look to a mod which never existed in such a way again. It's only 3.195 MB big, but it's really unique. It's called Timeline of Iron. Well, the player description is, the mod description, excuse me, is really, really huge, so we'll have some time uh, for it. Let's open the map first. So, brief history and nation divided. The world is on thin on ice once again. The world is on thin ice once again. The Americans are plunged into civil war and Prussia threats to further de destabilize the balance in Europe once crushed after the Italian war. War is not imminent across Europe yet, but only God will tell how chaos will rupture the peace. Let's select the scenario and let's see how the map looks like. That's how the map looks like. So Europe, I mean the whole world looks, well, historical. <laughs> we are in the year 1861. 1861 and here's Prussia. So anyways, before we analyze the counties one on one, let's take a look at the mod description. Yeah, I, I have two screens so the mouse always keeps rotating. That's, how can I avoid this? Uh, no, not that way. Okay. Ah, whatever, yeah. Finally, it, it, let's say it's already okay. Ever wished your game would drag on a bit more after you won the war? Thought that you wanted to conquer the world as Jefferson Davis before the Nazis came to stomp out? Wet dreams? <laughs> Wet dreams on balkanizing the entire world? This mod is just for you. This mod aims to stretch the timeline. Okay, there we go. This mod aims to stretch the timeline from the American Civil War in 1860 to the postmodern day around 2050, giving the player UN experience like none other. Frankly, the very idea of a Hearts of Iron 4 game stretching more than half a century is ambitious and absurd, but not one, but two centuries. Two centuries? I must be out of my mind. Yes, and yes, I am. A lot of trials and tribulations will be required for this mod to make any sense at all. And the amount of stuff left to count is unaimingly ginormous. But I believe someday we'll have a playable, wonderful mod that's stuck in my head right now. The inspiration for this mod originally was EU Force Extended Timeline, and that's where I got the idea of a game that doesn't end in two wars. We plan on a lot of overhauls, game mechanic changes, and alterations to make the game playable for around 200 years. So hold on tight and stay tuned until the final day we finish this marathon of a project. Link to uh, Creatures ET, okay, our oh, external timeline he means, in U4. As said, this project is very ambitious, but also fragile, and needs a constant flow of support to stay above the ground. That's why we are open to any form of contribution and always will be until Steam quits. Whether you are talented or not. Want to be a regular developer or a one-time contributor to or even a bystander that just wants to join in the fun, we always will welcome you with open arms. You can access us and the deals through Discord, our main platform of choice for communicating with the community and sharing developments. Anyone can join in the banter, here's the link to our server. We also make weekly Sunday updates and upload dev diaries on Reddit, a totally, or a totally original idea if you ask me. So, make sure to keep an eye on those and stay in flow with the latest updates. That's about enough for now. Just keep in mind that this project is still very heavy uh, WIP status and we can't guarantee a safe play until Gamma builds pop out. A quick disclaimer for anyone who wants to use this mod, we will try to be as compatible as possible with other popular mods, perhaps Black Ice when we can, but we can't spot in the changeable files unless we have mutual contact. Thanks for visiting this not-so-humble project and be sure to join our Discord, visit our Reddit or even subscribe to this mod. Every little thing helps us from going obsolete. See you next Sunday. So, this mod got released on the 19th of March, but I just saw it now. It's a really ambitious project, I'll have to embed, and well, in its current stage is far away from being finished. I was like in the pre 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 alpha stage, I would say. So before we uh, play as a country, let's take a look to the countries for with trees. Let's see what the Russian Empire can offer us. So the Russian Empire, yeah, all of the borders are uh, accordingly uh, drawn to the uh, historical timeline. So they, well, 
you can see because of the positioning of their forces, they have kept the 1936 formations. I can smell that already. Yeah, they have kept the 1936 formations of the armies because of their positioning. And so did the Japanese because they have troops in uh, the King Empire. So, let's see. Russia has a core population of 192 million, 127 factories. So that's quite a bit. And yeah, they are a really huge powerhouse, well, military-wise and civilian factory-wise, that's for sure. They are being led by Alexander Vtaroy, Alexander II. They are totalitarian nationalists. Uh, <laughs> what, you, Joseph Stalin even exists? Well, that's quite early for him to exist, I would say. Marx land, that's quite early for him to exist. Yeah, Dmitry Grishin, uh, Joseph Stalin, okay. Uh, Nothing usual here, just the Soviet stuff. Well, national focus wise, uh, the Russian Empire kept the Soviet focus. They kept the Soviet focus. They can't continue on this line because they are missing the party name. This is a. Well, oh, so they can't do the Great Purge. Oh, okay, so they are missing the party name. Well, they, that's just the basic Russian name. Uh, uh, Soviet focus tree. That's about Russia. Let's take a look. To, yeah, the Ottoman Empire, the huge Ottoman Empire. So the Ottoman Empire is insanely huge. It stretches all... I don't think the Ottoman Empire actually controlled Mozambique back then, but all right. So the Ottoman Empire has a population of 49 million, no core of 26 million, and 63 factories in total. Quite a bit, but only the half amount of the Russians. So they have... Tons of factories, that's for sure. Tons, insanely tons of factories of the Ottoman Empire. They are being led by Abdul Mejid the first, and they are despotic autocrats. Despotic autocrat, which means that okay, let's see. The other leaders' names are uh, Johannes Taylor and not really Turkish. Uh, okay, so that's the Ottoman Empire. Core population of around 50 million and 63 factories, so a uh, major power as well. Then the Austro-Hungarian Empire, or called Austria here, being led by Franz Josef the Erste, the Ersten, Franz Josef the First. They are similar to the Ottomans, despotic autocrats. Despotic autocrats, at least they have German names. And then their focus tree is the generic one of the game, which is really unfinished because it has no changes. So if you see, it says effect this focus currently has no effect. Changes in the world may affect this. So the focus tree is, well, implemented but not finished. So it is there, but it isn't finished. If you research, researching will give you nothing except world political power and uh, national unity here. But other than that, it's all saying. This focus kind has no effect, so it's still in development, keep that in mind. Then we have lots of German states, we have lots of German states, and actually faction-wise we have the Allies, the Allies. Uh, they should dismantle the Allies, to be honest, but okay. And we also have the Axis, the Axis, they are being led by... What do... Okay. Oh. My game just crashed, because you are not allowed to click on the German Republic. Uh, okay, so let me get back into the game. And yeah, don't click to the <laughs> German Republic, otherwise it will make your game crash. Don't click. Oh, okay, that's that's a major flaw because they forgot to edit it out and then the game crashes when you click on that uh, on more province of the German Republic. So we have to keep that in mind, yeah. Keep that in mind when you play with mods. Otherwise, let's uh, on multiplayer. Let's take a look. New game. There we go. We were looking towards Prussia, so let's get into the game as Prussia and see what they have to offer us. Now, Prussia has only 37 factories and their troops are German. Oh, no, that's, that's... Oh, the German Republic still kept their army. Uh, that's not really nice. They have to edit this out. It makes the game crash and destroys the uh, historic atmosphere in the game. So, Prussia has exactly zero troops. It has zero troops. Look at that. A core population of 36 million and 37 factories in total. So 36 factories. Uh, minor power, I would say. Prussia. Spectator. Let's see. Then we have Bavaria here. Bavaria has uh, 6 million sound factories. So these are all German miners. Small German states. 
Oh, yeah, the Prussian, they are pro totalitarian nationalists like the Russians. Okay, let's take a look to the French one. Well, the French at least kept their army. The army strength is 570,000, so they kept, I think, their ships as well. Uh, let's hope the ships won't crash. Okay, so it's called Bourbon France, France, and they are despotic autocrat. They are being led by Napoleon III. Napoleon III, they are despotic autocrat, and they, the French, have kept the uh, basic French focus tree. Yeah, they have kept the French focus tree here. No modifications. So, that about France. Now, the United Kingdom. The French have 47 factories in total, the UK has 60. Yeah, if you see, Russia shouldn't be that strong, because even back in 1861, I think the UK was the strongest country in the world. The British Empire was the most well-developed, industrialized country in the world. I think most of you can agree with that point, that the British Empire, that the United Kingdom and her colonies and her dominions were, were, were the strongest country in the year 1861. That has to be changed for sure. To get historical authenticity, what I just guess is what I just guess is they have um, just took the factory layouts from the uh, states, uh, from the states like they had been in the 1936 Vanilla game, and then just ported it temporarily like that. But I am sure that they will modify this. It's still in the pre-alpha. So, a British army is uh, well, 264,000 strong. Air is 26,000. Navy is 184,000. They have 60 factories in total. Compared to Russia, they are nothing. <laughs> well, the half strength, half of the strength. Uh, they mm, have their troops still, st still in Africa. The only thing they control is um, it's that. It's South Africa, Nigeria, and the rest here. Yeah. The rest of Africa isn't still uh, colonized at all. Perhaps they can add a colonization uh, feature. I think I saw a colonization feature in a mod, so I'm sure. They can add this. Not sure in which, but it was also a really old mod. I think it was uh, like I. It's, well, I think Napoleonic Wars it was called. It was really unplayable because of its crashes, but you could colonize there. So the principle kind of works. Well, then, let's take a look to Italy. They have kept their army too, of 215,000. They have 42 factories, and. Uh, yeah, they can't go here because Ethiopia still exists. But they have kept their uh, focus tree. The Ethiopian, uh, their basic focus tree. Well, that's Italy. And now we have the king. Well, look to the king. They have a core population of 575 million. And they have 66 factories, so the Chinese <coughs> can be considered a major power here. They are despotic autocrats, despotic autocrats. And uh, you can't change your commoners, so you can see. They are despotic autocrats, and they have the a uh, generic focus tree which is granted to any nations, to every nations which do not have the normal one. And they have, yeah, blocked to that core power place. The Russians, they actually could get communists, so... I see. Well then, then we have the Union States of America. The Union States of America. <coughs> Here we have one more problem. Mm. As is well, their core population is 95 million, they have 128 factories, but... Look to that, the United States still exists, the US still exists, they have to edit, they have to remove the US and the German Republic from the game. Because if I would click on it, it my game would most likely crash. So, well, we have an army of 144,128 factories. Then we have the CSA, the Confederate States of America. Well, the American focus tree is actually, well, generic. Hmm, they should have kept the normal one. So then we have the Confederate States of America with a similarly strong army, so it may be, well, they have zero military factories, so uh, war will lead one easily for the uh, Union here. Uh, well, the Union has no core cause on these states, so keep that in mind, and conquering the Confederate States, and if the Dominion of Canada, they should be Dominion of the UK, being led by G.S. Woodsworth, despotic autocrats. And yeah, that's that's the president of the majors. Then we have the British Riot, they should be a puppet and they have kept their normal uh, focus tree. Okay, so it's only. Uh, I may be criticizing some things, but keep in mind that that's a pre pre alpha and the mod is, is still miles, perhaps decades or universes away 
form considering itself complete. So that's only an alpha preview. So, we're gonna play as the United States of America in this playthrough. This presents our country, so as the United Union States. It's the United States of America. Uh, focus tree wise, it's no point. But perhaps to get 100 political power, we could afford to invest in the political field and convey our form of power to improve our nation. Let's say yes. We have exiled divisions there in the US. If I click on it, okay, it didn't crash. Nice. Yeah, they have zero military, foreign naval. I mean, how can they have naval factories in the US? Oh, that's really weird. Uh, they have their uh, North Focus 3. Uh, okay, I'll make another small light of this mod again if it's not going to complete. So they are called Union Soldiers. Union Soldiers, uh, we have exactly 24. All up to that, the generals, they are really, really historical, which I really like about this mod. We will get General George McCallum. Oh, it's, he's a field marshal actually. Let's get General William T. Sherman. Sherman, Sherman. Sign to the front line. The mm. mobile of the cavalry. Okay, let's capture mobile then. Mobile and executes. There we go. Union soldiers, or oh, they aren't ready. Look at their uh, strength. So let's unpause the game. Let's take a look to the research slots. Oh, they have what they have a completely custom uh, research. Uh, well, it's kind of custom. Yeah, we can't really advance the production because it's 75.72 years ahead. 74.72 years ahead. 4,818 days to take the research, so I wouldn't suggest you to go for the construction like I would do. So they have kept the um, timeline, so I like this because otherwise it would be too easy to get the insanely huge army and strong industry. We will get the uh, flintlock rifle then. Look to its stats, look to its stats. One, one, two. Unlocks line in infantry. So I really like, I really like it already that you have a custom uh, research tray, not the basic one. So a really sh great shout out to the multi developer here. And why? Oh, why can't we research it two times? Oh, that's, that seems like a bug for me. Yeah. Uh, so uh, everything else is actually ahead of time except the board gun. Let's get. The board gun, but its progress isn't displayed really. Well, what can be what could be the best doctrine for a only infantry army? Let's see. I think it's somewhere here. Maybe the mass assault doctrine, since less many focus on infantry, like infantry tanks. Um, no, I think the grand battle plan. Yeah, it doesn't really uh, progress the research, and everything else is. Uh, well, decades away from even being able to research. We can just get a fleet in being... <laughs> That's it. So, construction-wise, I would say let's go and militarize. Militarize, yeah. Let's build some military factories in Ohio and New Jersey. As well as in... Mm -mm, which problems are well developed. Uh, so, fine, there. In Wisconsin, Minnesota. Yeah, let's build two each in these provinces. Okay. Two there. So, uh, I can get the flintlock rifle, apparently. I can get cavalry equipment, although cavalry equipment, really. And I can get basic infantry equipment. Uh, although, isn't that the, uh, the same, to be honest? Defense 20, defense 2. Okay, that's the newer infantry equipment. They have to edit this out. They have to remove this, that's for sure. Uh, planes, why is there transport planes? No, thank you. I'm gonna get this, this, and let's get two of them. Okay. Uh, can, can we get ships? No, convoys only, not worth getting them. Okay, let's continue the game. Um, what? Well, the game just crashed. Um, I think, are we, is it actually unplayable when you progress, or is it just the mods I use? I use, what do I use? Uh, I use battle sound. I use really nothing which could disturb with the mods, do I? No, it's only depth this, I don't know, if I zoom out. Uh, I'm only using map features and nothing else. Let's, I'm gonna disable every other mod and see if it's actually, if that's the cost. Excuse me, but normally I had no problems with these mods. So let's disable everything which I used. So I have to re-enable them all the way later again, but that's fine. That's fine. 
So, a third time we are launching our game in the spotlight. Yeah. Not well done, but well, that's how we can only present the mods, which is fairly fresh. A single player, new game, let's see if that was the cause. If you're gonna play with the US. Uh, let's see, now we can see the map color change as well. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna try to unpause the game. Oh, it actually crashes, so it's the mod, it's not what I do, it's the mod. So, well, uh, the mod in its current stage is unplayable, but that was the uh, spotlight of the mod. So, how the developer said, go sure, if you want to uh, support him, support his F party, uh, point it clearly out that every uh, help is appreciated. Then go sure to um, perhaps help him if you, if you can, or just subscribe to him and favorite it. Everything will help according to the him to the mod developer. So uh, thank you all for watching me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Sacred and I'm out. Have a good day to you all and see you next time. Goodbye.